Welcome to our first episode from chapter 11. And chapter 11 is going to be one of our toughest chapters that we have this year because it's the beginning of our study of genetics. And in this chapter, you're going to learn about meiosis, which is a type of cell division that will create sex cells, which we use to make new offspring and sexual reproduction. You're also going to learn about the specifics of basic genetics. So you'll come across things that hopefully you've heard before, like dominant, recessive, homozygous, heterozygous, Punnett square, genotype, phenotype, etc. And those are all things that we're going to cover in this chapter. But on this first episode, we're going to go over something very simple, and we're going to kind of do a little bit of review of DNA, and we're also going to learn, once again, what a gene is and where do you find that on a chromosome. All right. So first of all, we're going to go over the basics of DNA. And you want to remember that DNA has the code for making proteins. So if you can remember from the Central Dogma song, where we had DNA to RNA and then RNA to protein. Remember the Central Dogma song? Get this written right in here. Okay, uh, this is the process of transcription and that would be the process of translation. So DNA has the code for making proteins. Now, proteins are really, really important because they control this chemistry of life. Specifically, the job of a protein of being an enzyme. And if you can remember, an enzyme is a protein catalyst. It lowers the activation energy so that a chemical process can happen much, much faster. Okay? Now, proteins do a bunch of other things. They're used for like structure, uh, movement. Um, they're going to be used for, you know, making that spindle fiber to help pull chromosomes apart during mitosis, meiosis. So, proteins do tons of things in your, in your body, and it's the DNA that has the instructions for making it. Now remember, DNA is made out of base pairs, and remember our Chargoff's rules. Remember, Chargoff is spelled like this. Chargoff's rules are always together, good couple. A to T, C to G. Okay. Now it's the sequence of A's and T's and C's and G's that will determine the sequence of amino acids in a protein. So if you want to remember some stuff like this, let's pick a different color. All right. Remember such things as a codon which would be three base pairs on DNA and RNA. One codon equals one amino acid. Get that written right in here for you. Okay, just a bunch of review back from chapter 12 and chapter 13. But what uh, one thing that this chapter is about specifically is DNA is inheritable. You can pass this on from offspring or pass it from parent to offspring. So like in you in particular... Half of your DNA came from mom, and the other half came from dad. So your genes were passed down from your parents. And someday when you have kids, you're going to pass your genes on to the next generation. All right, so let's get rid of all that stuff, and let's move on to the next slide. Okay, a gene is a particular piece of DNA that codes for a particular protein. So if you remember back from a previous chapter, we had this rhyme. One gene equals one protein. Okay, so one gene equals one protein. Now, we're going to talk about traits coming up. A trait, think of it as like this, as a physical characteristic. So often you can see these, but a trait can also be uh, something that happens inside chemically. So it can be internal, external, it can be chemical, it can be physical, like your hair color, etc., etc., but Remember, a gene codes for a protein, and then that protein will lead to that trait. Now, where do we find genes? Genes are found on chromosomes. And the particular place where a gene is found on a chromosome is called a locus. So think of the root word for locus. It stands for location. So it's just a location on a chromosome. So right over here we have a chromosome. In this area right here where this gene would be found, that's its locus. So it's right there. Now, a couple of other nomenclature things you want to know about this chromosome. This would be called the P-arm, and this would be called the Q-arm. In this area right in here, that would be the centromere. Okay, so the P-arm is above the centromere, and the Q-arm is below. And these little bands in here, they'd be given numbers. So this gene could be found on, say, let's say this is chromosome number 12, and it's found on the Q-arm at location 23. So its address would be uh, something like this. It would be like 12Q1, 
1.25. That would be its address, okay? So you would know exactly where this gene is found on which particular chromosome, okay? All right, so we're going to end this episode right here. Uh, a bunch more episodes to come along. We want to start you off with something simple. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side. <laughs>